Hey guys, so this will be one of those promised videos that will be basically just about my thoughts about uh, the monitoring, the logic of the monitoring, and not that much about the actual technical stuff. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about, about the triggers, and uh, you should know already that the trigger basically is a definition of the problem, so Based on the expression, you specify at what moment there should be raised an alert that something bad is happening inside your monitored environment. Uh, usually, uh, everybody are working with the default templates. Like even if you use Zabbix, there will be a bunch of the default templates available right after the installation as example for the operating systems operating system windows uh, same for the linux something for the snmp stuff there will be in this case like 19 items monitoring the processor load the disk something else low level discoveries and also the triggers you can see that these triggers have also the trigger functions, the actual moment when this trigger will go to the problem state with the severity average information or it could be disaster and send an alert. But uh, don't think that these numbers are like absolutely perfect to any environment, to any company, to any business type that might be happening. So it's definitely not a best practice to use all of the defaults of the trigger expressions and uh, well, same is about the items, the update intervals and other stuff. Of course, some of, some of them will be absolutely correct. Some of them might not be good for your environment. So you need to evaluate those triggers based on your hosts. I've heard like many times uh, from from the companies, from, from the monitoring people, uh, the complaints like, oh, the, this trigger, it, it's, it's okay. We are constantly getting like 100 alerts because of uh, lack of free memory on the server, but it's our database server and it's absolutely normal that it is consuming 100% memory, so just ignore it. Well, you can say just ignore it, but at the same time, somebody will be receiving a tons of the alerts about this just ignore thing. So instead of just ignoring it, you, you could and actually you should adjust the trigger thresholds and make sure that it won't be spamming you with the false positives. Uh, same applies on any templates that you might be getting from the community. You know that there is a Zabbix shirt that has uh, a lot of community-made templates. And it's even worse with these ones than it is with the official, official templates created by the Zabbix team. Because you don't know what's the quality of this. Someone could create this based absolutely 100% on their environment. And one template could cause a lot of trouble to your monitoring installation. Like, uh, yeah, again, those triggers, false positives. In the end, you might be sitting and thinking like, okay, I have a monitoring solution. I am monitoring all of my environment. Each day I am receiving 400 alerts. Everybody are ignoring them. And basically, I'm just spending some, some time and money on my monitoring servers and uh, on all the stuff to configure it but nobody really cares because it's simply not even possible to follow through 400 alerts daily which where 90 percent are false positives so what what should we do like uh, of course edit the triggers edit the triggers inside the templates and uh, be careful with the trigger function like you see here dot lost dot lost will always evaluate just latest received value so if you have a uh, system dot cpu dot load item that measures the cpu load of the system and you add the trigger dot last and if it will be higher than let's say 70 it will raise a problem let's say 90 cpu higher than 90 it's it's a disaster 
but because of this last there could be like tens of spikes over a day for a small amount of the time for a couple of seconds when it is higher than 90 and that's absolutely okay and that's not a disaster so instead you should configure your triggers like system cpu dot load let's say the minimal value over 10 minutes is higher than 90 so only when for the last 10 minutes the cpu load will be above 90 only then it will be a problem those are really simple things but so many times i've seen this absolutely wrong and in the end you have a monitoring setup but there's no use of it because it just spams your email with different alerts and uh, also be careful with this one the last i've seen so many times again complaints bad monitoring solution bad software i configure uh, trigger dot last one hour higher than 50 and it doesn't work so it just alerts because dot last trigger ignores the time parameter it will always be the last value even if you configure this like dot last one hour it will be the recent one single value if you will configure this like last hash two, trying to evaluate, let's say, two of the last values, this in the dot last will mean the second value, but still just one. So pick the proper trigger functions, get the list in the documentation of the Zabbix, go through it, it's not that big, and there is a super good explanation about all of them how you can use them, what's the possible output, let's say the same where it is same, there we go lowest value of an item within the defined evaluation period the minimal, and you are able to choose two parameters actually three or two you can choose the seconds, so specifying the time period which will be evaluated or amount of the values and you can even do the time shift so it is possible to configure something like the min minimal value uh, for the last hour is twice higher than this minimal value 24 hours ago for the same period and there we go for the last where it is last seconds ignored equals hash one always or hash number specifying the amount of the values normally the nth most recent value so still it will be just one single value in the last function what am i trying to say with these false positives and and and, and false negatives and all the configuration is brilliantly visualized here in the paint file so there are two options there are false positives there are false negatives and those are known uh known known things known stuff over the internet false positive means that you will get tons of the alerts that something is broken when actually it might not be even broken it was just a short spike that reached the configured threshold and because of that you received an alert false negative means that you configured your system so not sensitive that you ain't receiving any emails but actually everything is broken inside your company which is again bad so think about the trigger thresholds and try to get somewhere around here the golden spot where you receive an email only when there is actually a problem i do understand that it's not like easy uh from the scratch when you are configuring something creating new templates picking those good values but you have the system you have the database with all of the history just go to the reports check the triggers top 100 if over a week you are receiving 600 alerts about low toner or out of paper in one of the printers do you really want to receive like 500 alerts about that stuff daily Obviously, there will be some time when there will be out of the paper, but after five minutes, somebody will come and add some paper to the printer. So is it actually a problem? But at the same time, 
you know, let's say if we're talking about monitoring of the log file, you need that dot last because if once it happened, let's say uh, the schedule task, the cron, whatever else failed, it's enough to happen one time and that is a problem and there should be reaction on it. So long story short, don't use the default thresholds for the triggers, don't use the default parameters, always evaluate them, work with the actual alerts you are receiving and uh, make the sense of your monitoring instead just spamming out your colleagues with the potential problems that are not even problems because it's kind of normal so just ignore it. That is not correct. That is absolutely not correct. Not correct. So once again, check all of your alerts, check your configuration, check your templates. If there is a template for Windows, but on five hosts, there are different thresholds, then create those triggers with different thresholds for those five hosts. Don't just leave them as, okay, I don't mind them sending 500 alerts. Thanks. And uh, yeah. Have a good one, as usual.